Hey everybody, so today I wanted to give you a tour of NAC and if you're not familiar with what NAC is, it's similar to Airtable, uh, but the interface is uh, much different, not as uh, fun and pretty and um, user friendly for someone who's new, um, but it's very powerful. It's a relational database, just like Airtable, um, but the uses for it are different, and it's my go-to when Airtable doesn't fit the bill for uh, whatever reason. So you'll notice when you first log in to NAC, um, the difference between NAC and Airtable is uh, the word bases for each uh, separate kind of module that you're building in Airtable and that calls them apps. So uh, if you wanted to add an equivalent base in Airtable, you would do add app in NAC. So I've got two showing here just as examples that we're going to use to kind of give you a tour around. Um, the other difference of NAC is you can have as many as eight apps uh, in use on the pro plan shows you over here you have up to 50,000 records, um, up to 10 gigs, so that means you can have uh, up to eight client apps, you can have you know whatever you're using it for for the same monthly fee, uh, it's a flat fee, the pro account as of right now in March 2020 is $79 a month and it doesn't matter how many people I have accessing any of the apps in here, it's all the same flat fee. So depending on uh, if you're building a project for a client or how you're using it and how many users that you might currently be using in Airtable, it might make more sense financially uh, to have a NAC account if you can get past um, the difference in building and if you're um, maybe a little bit better about how to use relational databases. So what I'm going to do is uh, jump in here to uh, Automation Amy that I'm um, going to use as an example just to give you kind of a tour around and then I'll make my screen bigger because I've got a client account that I don't want you guys to see. Okay, so as you can see, it's quite a bit different from Airtable. The different, uh, many differences between the two, but have individual app settings, similar to base settings, but you can uh, specify, you know, the exact URL, put a description, set the time zones for each individual app, security that's enabled, they have script app protection, you know, different settings here. Then you have the ability to change the design of each particular app that you're doing. So if you had three different uh, customers, each with an app, you could set their colors and logo. You know, it doesn't get super fancy, um, but at least you have the ability to change. You've got header colors, you could do the pages and submit buttons, what your uh, notifications and links are, and then you can upload a custom logo here. And then, um, you have individual user logins that's a lot more granular than what you can do in Airtable, in my opinion. This is set up to truly build or tables, uh, which are called objects in NAC. You can set uh, permissions very granular, you know, allow all clients to go to the same URL, but when they log in, only their information pertaining to their particular uh, company account or service level would show to them. So you don't have to have, you know, individual access accounts. So if you need something a little more specific like that, NAC would be the place I would choose. So you can, um, you know, again, here's a bunch of login settings, require a single login, no login. Um, you could do individual pages that you want to have a login and some don't. Um, you know, a lot of individual settings here that you just can't do in Airtable. If you wanted to enable e-commerce, you can uh, use Stripe or PayPal. It's natively um, integrated here. You don't have to do any kind of, um, you know, Zapier or Automate, whatever you use as your automation program, you don't have to do that. So if I know that I have a client who's going to be using uh, forms or whatnot and needs, you know, a lot of uh, more heavy uh, or higher level 
features, let's say, and I need to use Stripe, um, that's another reason that I use NAC over Airtable. And this isn't to say that one is better than the other, it's just the different uh, use cases and what I need uh, and what would be easier to use starting right off instead of having to create a bunch of integrations just to make it do what I need it to do. So these are my two go-to Airtable and NAC. And then your embed code where you can embed the whole app right into your website. So if you are using this to build a client portal, um, you would just embed the actual portal page into your website. Clients would go to that particular URL and then the login and all that would be embedded uh, right there. And then they would log in and see only their information. So I know a lot of web developers just build that straight into their WordPress site. Um, you can do that or this is another option where um, if you have a NAC account, since you have up to eight apps that you can use, you could use one for your own personal uh, business information and you can have others for clients and you could do a recurring thing where you're, you know, you're charging above and beyond what you would normally pay, but you have multiple clients using the one system. So that's why I like it as well. It's easier to manage with that. So I've got a few um, things in here just to kind of show you how this is much more of a true um, if you built a Microsoft Access before, this is truly more of a relational database interface. It's not, um, you know, nice and quote pretty to work with and use like Airtable is. Um, so if that's a big thing to you, then, you know, maybe you won't like this as much. But if you're just worried about what you can do with it and the power under the hood, then, you know, get past that. So as I said before, objects are equivalent to um, tables in Airtable. So if you want to add a new one, you just click the add button. And here's three that I have here. So you're going to think of it the same way as an Airtable. Um, you know, you'd have a table for companies, a table for contacts, and then you would link uh, the records between them uh, to create that linking relationship. Well, in NAC, uh, you add a connection. So we've already added a connection from the company's uh, object here we've connected to contacts so that we can um, have multiple contacts for a company. So, you know, same thing, there's lots of access to different types of uh, fields. You've got, you can even do, let's see, where is it here? They are multiple choice. If you add that, uh, you know, you can select here if you want it to be a single select or multi-select similar in Airtable, checkboxes, radio buttons. You have, um, you know, date fields, you got a timer field, files, um, all this kind of, you know, general information here. You can even, I'm trying to find the, um, oh, you could do text formulas, you know, equations, different, you know, the, you still have that ability here to do that. When you're actually viewing records, like, you know, the regular table view and Airtable, it's the same thing, just again, not as um, pretty pretty. I didn't enter any data in here, but it would look the same, you know, it'd just be uh, rows across here. But the other thing that you can do in here a little bit easier is different tasks. So you could say, uh, you know, let's just call this test task. Uh, it's going to run at, uh, you know, I don't know, five o'clock. And then the action is going to be, you know, at this time every day, you can update something, insert something, uh, send a custom email, uh, set different criteria and values. So that is kind of innately built in and a little bit easier to add into your system than an Airtable. Over here, the way um, the access goes is user roles are defined as accounts. Everybody has an account in the NAC app and you just define um, the different categories of users. So here, for example, if we were doing website care plans, maybe you'd have, um, I always put in an admin level and that's for, you know, that's kind of the highest level access. Maybe you have some project managers that you only want to view certain things, only edit certain things. Um, developers, same thing, VAs, you know, however many different levels of account roles you have, you can do. And then you could have um, your client account role here as well. They even have um, approval templates you can send. Um, you know, you can access and adjust all of this innately, which is not um, provided in Airtable.
because it's different. This is a little, uh, I don't want to say more powerful because Airtable is very powerful. It's just, um, I think, more, or, uh, what's the word, maybe more natively built as a relational database. And Airtable's uses are um, a little bit different and what their kind of philosophy is on uh, bringing easy to code um, apps and such to the public. Okay, so you're probably wondering, you know, well, is this what this looks like to a client? Back end of NAC is considered this data and the front end is considered pages. It's kind of like you're building many website pages to access this information. Here we've got the dashboard. Again, this is gonna be a general login. And if I pull this up, you can see it's just set in the default um, blue. I didn't change any of the colors yet. I haven't added any kind of logo. And this would be, um, you know, let's say this is the URL that you would give out and people would go to it. And then they'd have their login to sign in. So if we had gone in and updated the colors, you know, this would have my logo here, you know, my, my pinks and turquoise and whatnot. Um, and then it would look a lot prettier. So some of these pages are not built out yet, but I'll give you just an idea of how this works. Let's say this new page uh, is gonna be uh, just for, uh, let's say it's just gonna be an admin page. Okay, see here, you can specify, you know, one, you could do more than one, whoever it is that you want to access this particular page you select right here. So what are we going to um, use to access on this page? So let's say it's, companies and I'm going to ask you several questions and do you want to add a form to add in a new company do you want one to edit uh, let's just leave the default for now and uh, so you could see here this is again kind of the back end view of it so on this page you're going to have a um, you can click a button to add a company uh, it's going to show you all of the current this is just you know some fake data all the current companies in here you can edit um, this actual table and come in here. You could change the names of what it's going to show, you know, change the layout. You can even set display rules. I'll show you kind of an example of that. You know, if um, let's say you had a status field and if status was pending, you could set um, the background color to show as highlighted so that um, pending orders for example stand out more you can um, filter records to start with so say that you had um, a whole bunch of companies some of them have been archived so say you only want to show uh, records that are active companies if your uh, system was set up that way you could filter to only show active companies you can add you know pagination uh, the ability to export records. If you want columns that don't have data in them to hide, you can hide those. Um, so as you can see, there's like a lot of uh, granular things that you can do. And this works really well. So for example, I have a client that they are a manufacturing facility and they had about 25 employees that they needed varying levels of access to kind of uh, do a particular internal process to create um, their product. So this was a much better solution than me trying to build an Airtable for them because they needed uh, lots of inherently built-in features that NAC has. They're not collecting payment, but they needed, you know, notifications to go off automatically at certain times. They needed um, uh, different users to be able to read only, to have edit access with, without getting the cost um, prohibitive. So all, even though they are willing to pay the amount of, say, 25 users that Airtable would charge, um, because it would have been a lot easier, or a lot more difficult to build uh, the project and cost them a lot more money. My suggestion was to actually build it in NAC and the project fee was not as much as it would have been in Airtable and it also saved them on uh, recurring um, subscription fees because the number of users I can offer in NAC versus what they would have to pay to get that access in Airtable was a lot less. Okay, if you had clicked this button on the front end, said I want to add a company, then your fields pull in here and with forms, 
the thing that you can do that you still can't do an Airtable yet, at least a native Airtable form, do conditional. Uh, so when I need to do conditional fields right now, I use uh, Gravity Forms because I've had a developer level license and they don't even call it developer license anymore for probably 10 years now. So I, I have that uh, available to me. So I just build um, conditional field type forms in Gravity Forms and then I um, is that my data directly into Airtable to, you know, sort and group and manage it the way I want. You can, you know, set confirmation pages. You can redirect people if you want them to go to a new page and do some other thing after they do this, you can do that. You can send kind of a, either a basic email or you could send a custom email, um, you know, and pull in fields that you want. All this is natively built in. So it's a good option when you've got the right thing going here. So here again, you can enable e-commerce on your form. You can add in, you know, some kind of title and groupings. Here you can decide to show um, as many column slash fields in the table view as you want. And then if you want to view more, um, you can have this link and it'll, if you click this link, it'll open the company details page and it looks like this. And you can change, um, you know, whether you want this to be in two columns, you get a different group, make that single column. So you can really um, lay the page out the way that you want. There's so much that you can do in here. I'm gonna come in here and add myself in as an account so I can go ahead and log in and show you on the front end what everything looks like. Okay, so now I've created an account for myself so I can actually log in so you could see a little bit more of what it would look like when you log in as a client or customer or however you have it built. So, um, so as you can see, we've got um, a dashboard button here. We've got a companies button here. And again, this is the back end of the companies. This is the back end look of the page. And here's the front end look uh, there. You can change how all this looks. Information will be displayed here and you can add the company and it goes straight to the form. You know, all of this can be controlled. So you're really building an actual interface that can be embedded straight into your website versus building a login and all these pages out straight through your WordPress. So it just depends on, you know, what your skill set is, what would be faster for you. This is an option personally that is faster for me. It's much faster for me to build it through this and embed it and have all this login stuff working the way I want it with notifications instead of hand um, building uh, through WordPress. I think what I'll do is I'll stop here and probably build this out a little bit more and then I'll give you a tour again of some more advanced features.